Welcome back to the channel, everyone. In this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at this ported Vortec head small block Chevy 350. It's gonna be a little bit different than your usual motor video. In this video, we're gonna be going to the drawing board and showing you what we use to make this little street motor tick and rumble in a neighborhood. While we take a look at this orange piece of cast iron and aluminum and metal, and there's some stainless in here too. The headers for this thing are actually a jet hot right now being coated. Still waiting for them to come back the time this video will come out. And what we have for you is I've compiled all the basic specs for everything that we'll cover in this video will be what's inside the motor and what I'm using to make it run. So hopefully it'll answer a lot of your questions. I've been asked a lot of questions about what's in it cam heads what i did for this so we'll try to cover most of that if you have questions of course let me know in the comments and then lastly before we jump to the drawing board i advise you to be cautious if you choose to do any of this to your own motor do your research first because just because it worked for me doesn't mean it always worked for everybody else so make sure you do your research i always recommend that and i think you'll be fine but before we wait any longer let's jump to that drawing board Okay, so the short block that I just showed you, factory GM 350 block with a stock stroke crank, so it's a 3.48 crank, ARP main studs, they have ARP rod bolts and scat rods, flat top pistons, they're icon with two valve reliefs, they have a Lunati hydraulic roller cam in this short block, double roller timing chain with adjustability, um, you can advance and retard it. I think I forget the, the exact degrees, but there's a bunch of different key ways you can change that. And approximate compression to some online calculators are giving me approximately 10, 4, 5 to 1 to 10 and a half to 1 compression. Now the cam in particular you may have questions about, which we'll cover more when we get to the heads and the valve train for this. But the cam card, I'll go ahead and show it to you. I did find it. This is advertised as a Lunati hydraulic roller retrofit cam. Um, it's a 294-302 advertised duration. As you can see, the duration of 50 is 243-251. Um, that is with a 1.5 ratio rocker. This advertised duration is not what they put on the website. It's 294-302. It's on a 110 lobe separation. And the approximate lift is 560 on the intake and 565 on the exhaust. So now let's go over here. We'll go a little further up the motor and we'll talk about the heads. All right, so up next on the drawing board, we have Vortec heads. Um, these I purchased about 10 or 12 years ago and I purchased them from place online. They offered them with the 20216 valves. These are the 062 versions. Um, they are home ported. So they're not professionally ported, they're home ported. I opened up the intake ports, um, removed all the casting lines on the intake side. I, there's like a little hump on the roof of the intake port. I removed all those and smoothed it all back towards the back. Didn't do a whole bunch on the valve side because I was afraid of messing up the valves and it wouldn't seal right. Um, didn't want to send them out to get another valve job. So I didn't do a whole bunch on that side, but I got in there as, as carefully as I could with everything. Hopefully I didn't mess anything up there. And opened up that a little bit as well. Uh, I did cut the valve guides down. And on my little diagram here, as you see, your factory valve guide boss is going to look similar to this. When you use the comp cams cutting tool, it's going to be similar to this. So as you can see, it's at least half the size of the original, if not less. I do have a comp seal on this. It's, I think, I can't remember the exact size, but... It's a comp seal that I have on this. I have screw in studs. They're not the expensive ones with the hex thing on it and the guide plates. They are like an incognito, as you see. Basically, you just tap the holes and run them down in there. I do have a PAC 1218 spring on this. They are installed at a 1 8 height. I have comp retainers, a GM intake gasket. The reason I ended up using a GM intake gasket is because it had the rubber around the intake ports. And it's also like a hard plastic um, that goes across and holds it together. I did try to match up the intake port openings to this gasket. So hopefully that's not too much. I did it on the intake as well and try to blend it up in there. We'll talk more about that in another video. 
I do have a Lunati hydraulic roller cam, of course. We're using Scorpion self-aligning 1.5 ratio roller rockers also. So that basically wraps up anything with the Vortec heads. If there's a lot of interest in what I did to these exactly, I can go into further details. But for now, that covers the gist of it. Let's jump to the next thing. Okay, for a valve train, it's nothing too overly complicated there. What I'm running basically is, as I mentioned, a Pac-12 8 spring, Scorpion roller rockers, as you see. I have Howard's retrofit roller lifters, hydraulic roller lifters, and I have a trick flow push rod on the intake and exhaust. That's about it for that um, real quick section. So next, we'll take a look at the intake and up before we jump to the fuel. Okay, so for the intake, it's pretty simple too, kind of like the valve train. I have an Edelbrock RPM air gap for Vortec heads. As I mentioned, I did kind of open up the ports a little bit on the intake side that goes to the heads. To try to match the gasket a little bit better. Um, hopefully that'll help with the flow. Um, like I said, I'm not an expert on the porting stuff, but I did open it up a little bit before I put it on. Um, I do have one inch spacer on it currently. I don't know if I'll either use the open or the, a ported, is what they call it, four hole spacer, or maybe both. Currently I have the open spacer on it, but I don't know which one's better. I guess that's gonna be a see of the pants feel. I don't think that's something you'll really notice. It'll be more taking it out and just goofing around with it, finding that out. Maybe none of them work and I'll just put the carburetor straight on the intake. Who knows? Mess with that eventually in the future. And lastly, as you see, I have ARP intake bolts and I have ARP bolts almost in everything that I could find on this motor. Um, I think they make a really good product and I'll try to use it in the future as much as I can. So now let's take a look at the fuel setup. All right, so for this particular motor, our fuel setup goes Holly 750 double pump for carburetor. No choke on this carburetor. It was removed. Uh, of course, mechanical secondaries. I did do a full rebuild since I did purchase it secondhand. And hopefully this will go back the way it was. I did uh, run it as is when I ran the motor. If you've seen any of my other videos where I did run the motor or my shorts, um, that was exactly how I got the carburetor from the person I purchased it from. But I have since then taken it apart and redid all of it. So it's a refurbished carburetor now that hopefully won't leak when I go to start it up next time. And to keep the fuel pressure in check, we have a Holly fuel pressure regulator. I haven't put that on yet. That's in the box still. It's like a six to nine PSI um, range adjustability. We have an eight AN fuel line feeding from the stock gas tank. And in the stock gas tank, I have a submersible fuel hose, submersible important there. So hopefully it won't deteriorate and fall apart inside the gas tank. And that is our pickup tube to the bottom of the gas tank. So I don't know how well that'll work yet, but that's how I have the fuel fed now and to the carburetor and then pulling the fuel from the tank and then feeding the carburetor, we have a Holly mechanical fuel pump that's 110 gallons per hour. I believe that this particular fuel setup should be fine for this motor. Um, if anyone knows differently, please let me know in the comments. So up next, let's take a look at some electrical things and miscellaneous things that I have on this motor before we wrap this up. All right, just some miscellaneous things before we wrap this up. Jake starter, it's their version. It's like good for like 12 to one or maybe it's 14 to one compression. Um, I've had no issues with it so far. Obviously there are better choices out there, but in the short times that I've started the motor, I had no problems turning the motor over. SFI flex plate, I believe that came from Summit Racing. I don't remember how many teeth it was, but those two work together fine. I had a good contact pattern on the wheel and the gear, so no issues there. I believe I used ARP bolts again there. As I mentioned, I have it all through the motor, so it's every bolt that I could find, I tried to use ARP. I have an HEI distributor, this one's supposed to be good up to like 7,500 RPMs. Of course, the motor here will never get close to 7,500 RPMs. And then feeding the spark plugs from the distributor, I have JEGS 8.5 millimeter wires. Again, I had no issues with those so far. I do have spark plug boot covers on them because they, they will get kind of close to the header tubes. I have Summit aluminum pulleys on this motor on both the water pump and the crank. And then as far as power steering, since so I'm keeping power steering in this truck, I have Jeg's power steering pump. It's a Saginaw style. 
And the pulley that I put on here is aluminum pulley as well. It came from Jegs as well. It matches with that. It should be in like the recommended if you purchase this pump. I don't remember the pump number. If anyone wants to know, let me know. But from this Jegs power steering pump, I did run PTFE braided lines over to the power steering gearbox itself. So it's not the rubber lines that come factory. I actually put PTFE steel braided lines on the, this. If anyone has any questions about anything there, let me know in the comments, like I mentioned before, or any other categories that we covered. Let's take another look over here and we'll get this thing wrapped up. Okay, so that's gonna wrap up this video. And as far as the Vortec motor goes, I think that it's gonna be a pretty stout little motor, but I'm curious if anyone has any comments about anything that we covered tonight, please let me know. And my curiosity comes from, what do you think this motor will make? Power and torque. Let me know in the comments. That wraps everything up. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, please consider hitting that subscribe and like button, and I'll see you next time.